Okay, so another continuation for our uh, topic of nutrition. Uh, we're going to just take a look at some uh, mostly pictures to help us kind of understand what we really should be eating and some of the kinds of foods that we should try to avoid. Okay, so again, here's our picture from Harvard. Um, you know, at least half of our diet should be fruits and vegetables. Uh, and that's one thing that the USDA and Harvard actually does agree on. Uh, so half of our diet should be fruits and vegetables. And then real whole grains, we'll take a look at some pictures of real whole grains. Uh, healthy proteins, uh, lean sources of protein, beans, poultry, fish, nuts. Um, and then, you know, eight glasses a day of water is a good idea. Um, and then, of course, some healthy uh, oils as well. Again, just another picture of this. Um, we took a look at this earlier. So, uh, again, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, fish, poultry, eggs. Uh, one egg a day seems to be okay. Uh, try and cut limit to that, though. Um, and then tofu, beans, nuts, seeds, um, a little bit of dairy, and some alcohol and some and multivitamins. Again, Dr. Wiles' uh, food pyramid. Pretty much the same thing as Harvard, except uh, he puts a little bit more emphasis on things like whole so soy foods, um, Asian mushrooms, cooked Asian mushrooms, and then some uh, healthy herbs and spices as well. Um, and uh, the vegetarian food pyramid again, you know, pretty much the same thing, except they don't have fish and soy, on, or excuse me, fish and chicken on here, uh, or poultry, I guess I should say, uh, but the rest of it is pretty much the same. And again, it's just important to remember, if you're going complete vegan, uh, no animal products whatsoever, um, you need to find a good source of vitamin B12, um, either from B12 fortified foods or from a vitamin, uh, from a, a vitamin source. Um, B12, uh, people that go complete vegan diet, like the Physicians Committee um, recommends, uh, after three years of a complete vegan diet, uh, you start to develop um, pretty significant issues uh, if you don't have a, a appropriate amounts of B12 in your diet. Okay. Um, so again, low carbohydrate diets, I know they've been a fad for the past decade or so. Um, Harvard did a large study on these and they concluded that low carbohydrate diet based on animal sources was associated with higher all-cause mortality in both men and women. Whereas uh, the veg uh, excuse me, vegetable-based low carb diet uh, was associated with lower all-cause and cardiovascular mortality risk. So if you want to go on an all excuse me, a low carb diet, do it with a vegetarian diet rather than a, a diet that is high in meat products. Um, NIH and the AARP, um, they did this huge study. It's actually ongoing. It's the largest research study ever conducted. And they concluded that dietary fat of animal origin was associated with increased pancreatic cancer risk. So pancreatic cancer is still pretty rare, but uh, it, it's almost always deadly. So, um, you know, just be careful with the amount of animal products that you're consuming. So overall, overwhelming evidence that plant-based diets, low in animal products, is uh, probably the best way to go. Okay. Uh, there's been some concern primarily about the way that the animals are being raised. The term that they use is factory farms. And uh, we'll take a look, look at some of these pictures. Um, uh, sometimes they call them CAFOs or concentrated animal feed operations. And in the past 30 years, they've just exploded. Um, this is where most of our meat is coming from now. Um, the CAFOs, um, very expensive. Uh, they get a lot of subsidies from the government. Um, there's also a lot of environmental uh, issues as well. Um, the American Public Health Association actually called for a moratorium on CAFOs. Um, basically, that means that a moratorium is an immediate cessation of a practice, a death of a practice, um, due to the significant public health burden. That's caused by the practice. Um, they use a lot of. They inject the animals with a lot of drugs. They use antibiotics uh, to promote growth, primarily, but also to prevent the spread of disease, uh, because the animals are living in such unhealthy conditions, um, and uh, it, it's just causing a, a whole range of public health issues. Um, and then, of course, uh, I mentioned earlier, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services now tells us that we should be eating organic foods as much as possible and uh, only eat free-range meats raised without antibiotics and growth hormones. Again, so that's, um, they're telling us, they didn't use the term factory farming, but they're telling us that we should avoid factory farming meat. Um, so again, overall benefits of a healthy diet, prevent cancer, 
prevent and reverse cardiovascular disease, diabetes, reverse allergies and asthma. Uh, most people don't really think that, but absolutely, your, your diet can absolutely affect allergies and asthma. Uh, reverse depression, um, arthritis, help maintain a healthy weight. Uh, there's a whole slew of benefits to uh, eating healthy. Um, uh, again, as far as organics, um, try and eat you know organics as much as possible. We'll take a look at some uh, some foods that you definitely should eat organic. Uh, there's a chemical. It's called bisphenol A, BPA, and uh, the President's Cancer Panel came down pretty hard on BPA, um, telling us uh, actually uh, requested that the President ban this chemical, and uh, it still has not been banned, unfortunately. It's primarily found in canned foods and in plastic water bottles. Um, so um, I would highly recommend that you uh, drink out of a stainless steel bottle rather than a plastic bottle. And uh, if you're going to use a microwave, uh, remove the food from those plastic containers, those black plastic containers, and put it in a ceramic dish before you microwave it because the chemicals from those black plastic uh, containers actually leach into the food during the microwaving. So uh, I wouldn't use any plastics at all in the microwave. Always use something in a ceramic dish. Um, and uh, again, try and eat uh, organic, you know, free-range meats if you choose to eat meat. Um, certain foods have uh, been found to have very high pesticide residue, so they recommend that we only eat organic varieties of these types of foods. Um, apples, celery, bell peppers, peaches, strawberries, spinach, grapes, green beans, lettuce, cucumbers, blueberries, potatoes, nectarines and kale. So again, the one thing that all these things have in common is that we do not peel any of these things. Uh, I guess other than potatoes, but you know, potatoes are actually best when you eat the skin. So, uh, you know, these are all foods that you actually eat the skin. Um, and then they found the clean 15. Uh, these are foods that seem to be okay if they are eaten conventionally. Uh, the pesticide residue isn't there. And then again, if you look at this, most of these are foods that you peel. Um, eggplant would be the exception, asparagus, cabbage, um, but I think the rest of them pretty much you peel, sweet potatoes. Um, uh, I would, mushrooms are on here because there's no pesticide residue on the outside of the mushroom, but it's a good idea to eat organic because uh, if it's grown in soil that has chemicals, the mushrooms absorb those chemicals. So it's probably best a, a good idea to eat organic. Look for those stickers, the USDA organic sticker, uh, or the non-GMO project, uh, that's a good sticker to look for too, means it hasn't not been genetically modified. Uh, the only thing, the only foods that are really genetically modified are the primarily foods that are uh, uh, GM foods are corn and soy. Uh, there's some other ones too, but those are the most common ones. Um, so again, just some pictures of, of what we should be eating and what we should try to avoid. Um, vegetables in abundance, obviously. Um, all types, all different colors, you know, um, if we're eating nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day, you know, at least six servings of vegetables every day. These don't count. All right. Um, Campbell's soup, first of all, it's in a can, so it's lined with BPA. Uh, it's loaded with sodium. Uh, those vegetables are probably not organic. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you're cooking all the nutrients out of the food. Hot pockets, again, high, heavily processed, does not count as a vegetable. French fries, of course, are a major concern. Uh, those veggie chips, you know, they're better than potato chips probably, but they're still a, it's still a snack. It's still junk food. Um, whole grains, you know, these are all great examples of real whole grains. Um, Irish steel cut oatmeal. Um, you know, some of these things take some time to cook, but uh, it's worth it. Um, you know, if you have to, get a pressure cooker. You know, if oatmeal takes 30 minutes on a stovetop, it takes about 10 minutes in a pressure cooker. All right. Uh, brown rice, of course, is good for you. Uh, that's pronounced quinoa. Uh, it's, um, it's a great uh, grain. I think it comes from South America. Um, this Eden Organic, that's a great company. Um, they have really good uh, whole grain foods. So, you know, if you eat pasta, try and get whole grain pasta. Um, it's filled with protein, filled with fiber, really good for you. That bread um, in the bottom right corner, you know, that dark brown bread uh, can be really healthy as long as it's whole grain. Um, look for that you know whole grain stamp, that 100% whole grain stamp. And then when you're reading your nutrition labels, uh, you'll see on the far right here, um, one, a good thing to check out is the total carbohydrate, 
which is 26 grams, versus the dietary fiber, which is 4 grams. And what you want is a, at least a 10 to 1 ratio of total carbohydrate to fiber. So if this has 26 grams of total carbs, it should have at least 2.6 grams of fiber. And ours has 4, so we're all set. Okay, so that's really what you want to look for. And the big problem foods are foods that have, you know, 40 grams of carbohydrates and less than one gram of fiber. Um, but that's a, a pretty good way to look at uh, for, you know, healthy grains. Um, these do not count as whole grains. Um, in fact, these are really terrible for you. Um, you know, basically when you're looking at Wonder Bread, you know, processed white flour, that's almost the same thing as sugar. Uh, once it gets absorbed into your body. So those buns, bagels, you know, white bread, all those cookies, all those crackers, the pancakes and the waffles that are all made out of white flour, uh, all, those are all things that we need to avoid as much as possible. Uh, Quaker oatmeal, again, oatmeal is, is, is good for you, but that Quaker oatmeal, it's got a lot of sugar in it. You know, it probably doesn't have much fiber in it because uh, it's instant oatmeal. Um, so just try and be careful with those things. Again, try and follow that 10 to 1 ratio of carbohydrate to fiber. And then, you know, General Mills has been promoting that all their foods are whole grains, uh, which is a blatant example of false advertising. Um, again, look at the total carbohydrate, 22 grams to 1 gram of fiber. So it does not pass our test. 11 grams of sugar. And then if you look at the ingredients there, yes, it, do, it was at one point made from a whole grain oat, but then it's mixed with a bunch of chemicals to give it color, um, a bunch of sugar. And uh, again, this is candy. It's, it's, they should not be able to put whole grain on there. Um, again, another example, you know, tricks. Um, whole grain is the first ingredient. Well, technically, yes, at one point it was made from genetically modified corn. Uh, but then they mix it with sugar and different uh, corn syrup, which is just another form of sugar, um, all these different chemicals. Um, and uh, some uh, BHT, which is another chemical that they use to preserve freshness, um, keep it on the shelf longer. Again, 20, 27 grams of carbohydrate, one gram of fiber. Uh, the reason that they remove the fiber is because it uh, extends the shelf life. All right, so um, if you, corn is a grain, all right, and a cup of corn has 16 grams of protein, 12 grams of fiber, and eight grams of fat, and it's healthy fat, it's good fat. Um, but you look at a cup of, uh, tricks. it has, you know, instead of 16 grams of protein, this has one gram of protein. Instead of 12 grams of fiber, it has one gram of fiber. Uh, instead of eight grams of fat, it has, uh, what is it, 1.5 grams of fat, about two grams of fat. So what's going on with all these extra protein, fiber, and fat? You know, who, who knows? It got processed somewhere. And then they add some, you know, uh, fake nutrients into it to make it appear to be as healthier than it actually is. So again, this is candy. Um, I would recommend that you highly, uh, highly recommend that you avoid that as much as possible. We talk about the glycemic in index in our textbook. It's basically a way to uh, measure how quickly, um, how fast, and how much foods affect our blood sugar levels and our insulin. So the foods that we they recommend that we try and avoid are you know the high glycemic index foods, things like chips and white flour products, cakes biscuits, ice creams. Um, watermelon, technically, yes, it is on there, but, you know, watermelon is also packed with nutrients. Um, potatoes are the same way. White potatoes, yes, they are on there, but uh, there's also a lot of nutrients in there, too. So potatoes in moderation are probably okay. Um, versus the whole grain foods, you know, basmati rice and vegetables, uh, lentils, pasta, uh, whole grain breads, oats, those are much more lower, much lower on the uh, glycemic index. And those are the foods that we should really try to stick with. Um, so again, if you choose to eat animal products, you know, this is what you should try to eat. Um, you know, game meat actually has a lot of health benefits over the factory farmed meat. Um, bison is actually uh, relatively healthy. Um, if you look at a piece of bison, it's very dark red meat because it's got much less fat in it than uh, beef does. Uh, ostrich is actually... Uh, pretty tasty. And again, that's coming from a vegetarian. So uh, it's been a long time, but uh, the ostrich is actually pretty good for you. Free range chicken is, is the way to go. You know, grass fed beef, um, you know, salmon that actually comes from 
uh, a river rather than from uh, you know the the, uh, the fishing farms. Um, these are the kind of foods that we should avoid. Foods that come from factory farms. So if you look at those chickens uh, in the top right corner there, that's how the chickens live, and they're literally covered in their own filth. They're packed in uh, very cramped conditions that are just ripe for disease. Um, they actually have to feed the chickens drugs that contain arsenic because the, uh, there's so much bacteria in the, that they're exposed to that the, they need the arsenic to kill the bacteria. So there is arsenic in uh, detectable levels of arsenic in chicken meat that comes from factory farms. So we need to be careful about uh, eating factory farmed meat. Those cows at the bottom right corner, of course, are in a factory farm. They're eating corn rather than uh, grass, which is what they're supposed to eat. Um, that's what they evolved to eat. Um, these pigs spend their whole lives in these crates, um, not allowed to move. Um, they get so stressed out that they tend to chew the tails off of the other pigs if they have uh, the, the ability to do that. So, um, you know, all, all these, you know, completely aside from the, um, the welfare of the animals, uh, it's just not healthy to eat meat from these types of animals. Okay. Um, again, beans, nuts, all great sources of protein, um, seeds, uh, real tofu. I would recommend real tofu over some other the, the processed uh, soy products. But again, beans are a great source of protein, great source of fiber. Same thing about nuts. Nuts have very healthy fat in them. Um, processed foods, definitely want to avoid as much as possible. Um, the peanut butter actually isn't that bad. Uh, but the, uh, a lot of the processed peanut butter has a lot of sugar and a lot of salt in it. So um, try and get uh, either eat the whole nuts or try and find uh, a healthier version. Just be careful of the sugar consumption. Um, of course, the scrapple is, a, is a not very healthy or the bologna, the processed meats. Um, that tofurkey, <laughs> the uh, fake soy. So it's, it's made from soy, but it's heavily processed soy. And uh, that should actually try and be avoided uh, as much as possible. Any type of fake meat made out of soy should be avoided. Again, the tofu is okay, edamame is okay, but the heavily processed stuff should be avoided. Um, fruits, of course, great snacks, right? Um, berries every day, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries. You know, uh, one apple a day will lower your cardiovascular risk uh, as much as taking a statin. Um, statins are actually probably cheaper than apples, but... Uh, you know, the apple a day actually is very good for you. These don't count, all right? This does not count as fruit. Uh, last semester, one of my students told me that she wanted to start being healthier, so she was going to eat fruit roll-ups every day, all right? Just because it says made with real fruit does not mean that it's healthy, all right? None of these are going to pass our um, 10 to 1 carbohydrate to fiber test, all right? Uh, you know, if you uh, choose to ch eat, uh, consume dairy products, um, look for you know, grass-fed, organic. Um, again, cows are supposed to eat grass. They're not supposed to eat corn. Uh, when you feed a cow corn, it completely uh, changes the, the cow's, uh, the animal's uh, biochemistry. Um, the uh, the grass-fed uh, milk, the grass-fed dairy, it's actually much more nutrient-dense. Uh, and uh, there's some concerns about some of the antibiotics and some of the other drugs that they're feeding those cows. So try and look for organic uh, as much as possible. Um, or you can go to other sources, rice milk, soy milk, uh, hemp milk, uh, almond milk. Um, just be careful of the sugar content uh, of those products as much as possible. Um, these are stuff that the things that we should probably try and avoid. Um, processed cheese. Kraft Singles, um, it's not even real cheese, it's prepared cheese product. Um, cheese Whiz, you know, cheese dip. Um, those fake cheeses, um, they're actually the leading source of aluminum in the American diet. They put aluminum, for some reason, in the, in the cheese. Um, it's supposed to affect the texture of the cheese, give it like a smoother texture on the tongue. Um, so, you know, people are so concerned about baking with aluminum foil or the aluminum that is in uh, vaccines, and uh, those things pale in comparison to the aluminum that is in cheese, processed cheese. Um, this was a, a, um, 
a poster that the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine put. I think it was it was like the Super Bowl or the Indianapolis 500. It was some major sporting event, and they put these posters above every urinal in the state in the stadium, and it was um, because uh, excessive milk consumption, excessive dairy consumption, um, is has been linked to prostate cancer. So um, just be careful about dairy consumption, especially for the men. You don't really need it. You can get calcium from other sources. Um, you know, one glass is probably not uh, a big problem, but you know, we're we're consuming almost double what even what the USDA recommends. So just be careful with your with your calcium or your dairy consumption. And of course, heavy whipping cream loaded with fat, um, that Kraft macaroni cheese. Again, it's refined carbohydrate. The pasta is refined carbohydrate, and then you're slathering um, processed cheese on top of it. Uh, that yogurt, again, not a big deal, but it's, that stuff is probably loaded with sugar. So just be careful about your sugar uh, consumption. Again, great sources of for those of us that have a sweet tooth. You know, dark chocolate, really good for you. Uh, sorbet, I highly recommend. It's basically um, fruit. Put fruit in a blender and put it in a freezer. It's basically what sorbet is. They do uh, sometimes add some sugar to it. So just, again, be careful about the sugar content. Uh, again, organic dairy uh, ice cream. You know, limit your ice cream consumption, obviously, but organic's okay. Some of those fruit bars are okay. Um, just be careful. Again, uh, these don't have any uh, added colors to them. Uh, it says no sugar, but there is artificial sweetener in there. I forget what it is. Aspartame, probably. So, uh, again, just, you know, yes, it is It is made from fruit, uh, but just keep in mind that you're not supposed to have more than one serving of fruit juice a day, and that's basically what that is, is fruit juice. So, again, just be careful. Uh, these are things that you definitely want to avoid. Um, those blizzards look good, uh, don't they? But uh, we just, uh, that's just too much, too many calories in there, uh, too much fat, too much sugar. Uh, same thing with the Snickers bar. You know, that SpongeBob thing, you know, I like SpongeBob too, but you know, that, that thing is uh, cream covered with sugar and chemicals. So uh, definitely we, we need to be careful about the amount of sugar and chemicals that we're consuming. Um, I grew up chewing Big League Chew all the time, but uh, I, I won't give it to my son. Uh, um, you know, tea, great beverage, um, second most commonly consumed beverage in the world after water. Um, water, of course, try and get eight glasses a day, a couple glasses of tea a day. Coffee is actually good for you. I should have that up there. A glass of red wine, maybe two for men is okay. Um you know, not all four of those beers at one time, but one of those beers uh, is okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a juicer. Um, if you are not real big into eating fruits and vegetables, a juicer can be helpful. I use a juicer for my son. Uh, not these. These are things that we want to avoid. I forget what the calorie count is on those Starbucks drinks, but it's probably around four or 500 calories. Um, so very caloric. Um, just be careful. Um, again, Coca-Cola, there's not, nothing healthy at all about soda, even if it's diet soda. There's nothing good about soda. So it's not going to help with weight loss. In fact, diet soda has been linked to weight gain. Um, and uh, just drinking uh, three sodas a week elevates your risk for osteoporosis because of the phosphoric acid in there. Um, you know, I mentioned alcohol is okay. You know, maybe a glass of beer. If you're cracking open a 40 of, of St. Ides, you're probably going to drink that whole thing. So, um, <laughs> you know, try and avoid malt liquor. All right. And then, of course, uh, just sugary drinks aren't good for you. Uh, Gatorade, if you're actually working out and doing a really intense workout, uh, a little bit of Gatorade is, is probably okay. But um, most people don't work out that heavy and they're still drinking Gatorade. Again, filled with fake colors, artificial colors, a lot of sugar. And it's just, uh, it's just really not good for you. Uh, you know, people criticize me for putting this up here. Elevation Burger, I don't know if they're in Harrisburg. Uh, they're out in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, it's still junk food. It's still greasy food, but it's organic grass-fed beef. Um, it's, you know, real milk, organic milk that they use for the milkshakes. So a little bit healthier than some of the other places. Panera, again, a lot of the lunch meats there are kind of shady, but, you know, you can go in there and get a veggie sandwich and a cup of bean soup, and it's, uh, you know, it's certainly better than some of the other choices. Chipotle, of course, is, is getting pretty well known. You know, Whole Foods, it's a little expensive, but uh, it's okay. You know, these are the places that we want to try and avoid, all right? Burger King, uh, Mickey D's, uh, of course, Pizza Hut, the Colonel, and uh, Krusty Burger. Try and stay out of Krusty Burger, all right? 
um, exercise every day, of course. You know, we'll talk more about exercise when we cover physical activity, but at least 30 minutes a day, you know, an hour for kids, a variety of different types of exercise. Try and avoid doing this, all right? <laughs> all right, so my, my son uh, likes to call this guy the scary fat guy. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully I didn't cause anybody to lose their appetite with this. Okay, hope this was helpful.